Hello. Thank you for listening to this week's message from Calvary Baptist Church. We are located in Lake Havasu City, Arizona and online at calvaryaz.com. Our sermon notes are referred to as life notes and they can be downloaded from calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Today's message is about freedom from religion based on Galatians 4, verses 8 through 31. Now here is Pastor Chad Garrison. Hey, I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians 4 is our text today. And uh, if you're in one of our uh, rooms and you don't have a Bible with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1,156. You'll find Galatians chapter 4 and be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you're at any of our campuses and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take one. It is our gift to you. Now, uh, I know Parker gets that because you guys are joining us. uh, But uh, I know today our North Campus is going to be joining us uh, as well. And we don't have Bibles there and you can't turn to that same page yet, but that's coming soon. So just wait for it and it'll get there. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, would you message us? We'll be glad to get you a Bible, whether we mail it to you or hand deliver it to you. We want you to have God's word and read God's word because we know if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life. Hey, we've been talking about the battle between grace and works, between grace and religion for the last several weeks. And, uh, and we talked about, you know, what Paul wrote. We talked about how we were in a prison and and Jesus set us free. And uh, Paul is passionate about the Galatians and, and us getting this, this truth about the gospel. Because Paul knows that each of, one of us will have a choice because we're going to live as slaves to religion or we're going to live free in Jesus. Okay, we're, that, that, if, if you're a follower of Jesus, then this is a choice you have to make. If you're not a follower of Jesus, we're going to talk about that and hopefully you'll make that choice to live free in Jesus. But... Um, This is a choice all of us have to make. And Paul writes about this in Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. That's uh, the text I'm going to share with you today. And then I'm going to introduce you to um, the person who's helping me uh, share this message. Paul says, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, How can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid I may have labored over you in vain. And he goes on to talk about this battle between uh, being a slave to religion and being free in Jesus. So before Jesus, we were all slaves to religion, but we were set free in Christ. Uh, But some people in the church in Galatia were reverting to you know, a works-based religious life. And that was driving Paul crazy because he didn't want us to choose slavery again. So Paul and I want you to be free in Jesus. Okay, just for the record. Paul wants you to be free in Jesus. I want you to be free in Jesus. So as we're continuing this conversation about grace and works, about religion and faith, uh, I want to introduce you to Kyle Gallagher, who is a, the student pastor at Cross Church Surprise, Arizona. And uh, his pastor is a friend of mine. And he was telling me about his story. And I said, hey, can I borrow him for a weekend? Because I want you to hear his story and how God has changed his life. So I'm going to, the the sermon tonight on this whole subject of freedom from religion is going to be me interviewing Kyle. uh, And so I hope you enjoy it as much as we're enjoying it because we've been having a a great conversation with this. So Kyle, uh, first question, just, you know, can you share, by the way, it's great to have you here. And so, but uh, You've got an amazing story. So can you just share your story, how you were raised and how Jesus changed your life? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, it's good to be with you guys. I love Lake Havasu. Me and my wife vacation here all the time. We're from California, actually. Every, uh, everyone else is here, too. Everyone else is here, too. So I'm assuming that. So, hey, I'm in good company. Um, yeah, going back to your question. Um, I was born and raised in Mormon faith. Uh, my dad served a mission. My uncles all served missions. My mom attended BYU Idaho. Um, I'm as Mormon as Mormon gets uh, when it comes down to the faith. Um, but um, way of life, that was just what I always known. Um, that was just part of our life. So baptized at eight. And then, um, yeah, things started to change pretty radically when I turned 12. 
um, something that I never thought would happen. I was just going through life, and MySpace came around. Hey, MySpace out there? Yeah, that's how old I am. Um, sort of. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand, that's social media in the ancient days. Exactly, right. Before Facebook. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I get this MySpace, I start talking to this girl, I'm like, cool, I got a girl, okay. Um, it turns out it's my half-sister, and uh, <laughs> yeah. That's not supposed to happen That's in your not. good Mormon families, yeah, is it? You know. Okay. <laughs> Um, so she starts explaining this story that, hey, I live in the town next door to you. This is our dad. Uh, we come from the same father. Um, and just starts laying out all these things to me. And uh, I was pretty shook up. I invited my mom into the conversation. I was like, hey, who is this girl? Like, tell me what's going on. And then her mouth just like dropped. She called my dad. Um, he's a truck driver, so he headed home. Uh, they decided to just tell me the story. I, I, my biological father got two girls pregnant. He chose my sister and uh, his mom, or her mom. And, uh, and me and my mom were just left. And then uh, um, she met my, my stepdad, and um, they adopted me and didn't find this out until the age of 12. So that spiraled a lot of things. Um, I started to not believing in the faith anymore. I started rebelling a lot. I started going to, um, they called bishops and stake presidents. I was getting in a lot of trouble with the Mormon faith. Um, and I just became atheist, ultimately. I just questioned God at everything. I just thought God was a big Wizard of Oz head, and he was just giving out commands, and we just had to live by him. Um, so yeah, just basically became atheist at that point. Um, got towards the end of my high school, I'm about to graduate. I became really successful in cross country. I know I don't look like I used to run cross country, but that was my sport. Um, <laughs> Uh, I had a scholarship to go run at the University of Florida. Um, my dad sat me down and said, hey, I'll pay for a mission, but I will not pay uh, for your college. So I said, well, where are you sending me? And uh, he's like, Chile or Ancagua? And I was like, let's go, South America. I'm down with that. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was gonna be a big, huge party at, down there in South America. And that's where they ended up shipping me. And that's exactly what it was for the first six months, man. I was, they would call it a treckle missionary, um, not doing very missionary things. And uh, my companion was from California as well. He's from San Diego area. His name was Elder Sumataya, Andrew Sumataya. I love that guy still. Um, but he uh, started showing me the gospel, tried to do it through Mormonism and things like that. I was like not having it. Uh, we ran into this 16 year old kid in the middle of the plaza one time. And uh, this kid was going through a hard time. Uh, his dad left him, same story like me. Um, he was an atheist as well. Um, he was living off 50 pesos a day, Chilean pesos a day, and taking care of his two brothers and his mom that was on cocaine. And uh, he just had it with God. He just had it with life, I felt like. But my companion challenged him to pray for the first time. And when he said his prayer, that was the time where I just felt chills go like all throughout my body and I could ever understand every single word out of his mouth. And so it kind of like took me off guard and I was like, okay, what is this? And so from that point on, I was just like, all right, God, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go see if you're real. I'm gonna study the Book of Mormon and the Bible side by side and I'm gonna just find out who you truly are. And so that's what I did for two months. I sat down and read the Book of Mormon and the Bible side by side. I determined the Book of Mormon is not true, so I kind of tossed that aside. And then um, I started looking at the Bible and I started looking at who Jesus really was. And if you don't know anything about Mormonism, Mormonism, they believe that Christ, when he knelt down in the garden, he atoned for all the sins of the world. They believe that's the point of where he took the sins of the world upon himself. Um, we don't believe that in Christianity, obviously. But when he, when Luke, the Gospel of Luke described the, the blood pouring out of Jesus' pores, it just hit me really hard. It just hit me really hard where I was like, Jesus has got a body of flesh and blood. And then I started diving in deep with the crucifixion and I started diving deep into like what the cross really meant and I was just like, all right, like Jesus, you're, you're real, man. Like you did die for my sins. And, and so for that first time in my life, like I knelt down near my bamboo chair, on my bamboo chair, in the middle of this mud hut, and I said my first prayer to God, and I said, God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and I know that he died for my sins so that I could be free. 
And, and it just changed my life after that prayer. And my mission changed completely. Um, I tossed the Book of Mormon to the side. I just wanted to preach the Bible. And so- <laughs> Not, not yeah. a really good Mormon missionary at no, that point. Not. But, <laughs> hey, I just, gotta, I just gotta make this, uh, this observation. <laughs> And I love this about your story because you came to faith in Jesus basically with a Bible and the Holy Spirit. Right. And, uh, you know, you heard me just a moment ago uh, invite people to take Bibles and read Bibles because if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. And, and you are a living example of how He can do that in the most radical sense of the Word. Amen, and, brother. Yep. And I love that. That is incredible. <laughs> yep, absolutely, man. That, that's, the, that's the something that's so cool about God that I just have just really dived in with, with him and just learning his word. What does it actually say in these scriptures as opposed to what religion says? And being a student's pastor, man, kids are constant, constantly under attack with religion, whether it's organized religion or just things outside this world. And I'm just always trying to push, push them back to what does the word of God say yeah. in your life? As a great thing. So, okay, so you're um, a Mormon missionary. You're on yep. mission in Chile. Uh, you, uh, you come to faith in Jesus, surrender your life to him. What happens when you get home? <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys all laugh. <laughs> Uh, so I get home. Uh, first of all, they take me to in and out I love in and out Anybody in and out fans? Yeah, that's my place, all right? Uh, so they take me in and out uh, We're having a good time. We're talking. I start getting home. I'm unpacking. A couple weeks go by, and I'm like, how am I going to break this to them? Um, so yeah, I just start talking. I just go, hey guys, like I don't know if I want to do the whole BYU thing, because I think they were still pushing me to go to BYU. Um, hey, I don't want to do that. Okay, what do you want to do? Well, I don't want to be Mormon anymore. And <laughs> uh, you can imagine how that went. They're like, what? They were really confused. Like I just served a two and a half year mission, um, did a really good job out there. Like I was a trainer, did all these other things that the church wanted me to do. And then I just dropped this bombshell on them and it hit my dad pretty hard, um, to be honest. And one night I just remember him sitting me down on the couch and he goes, Kyle, like, if you're not gonna be part of this faith, then you're not gonna be here. And so I said, okay, dad, like, this is what God's word says, this is what Jesus says, this is what I wanna follow, this is what I wanna do. And so I just remember the next day, I packed up my stuff, my brother helped me out, <laughs> he was all excited for me, I don't know why, um, but. <laughs> One in your room. <laughs> yeah, my room, I think, well, we shared a room, so, you know. <laughs> he got, got his own room. Stuff. There you go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, man, packed all my stuff and I was out, I was out, I was all by myself. So that was it. That was it. That's, that's where I was. Uh, all by yourself. Out in the streets. Out. Okay. Yep. Living, living on the streets. Yep. Living okay. on the streets. And then, um, then about two and a half months later after that, I met my beautiful wife. She's sitting in that row right there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can clap for her. She's beautiful. It's okay. Um, but yeah, I met her. Um, I started running cross country again. One of my old cross country coaches became one of the junior college professors there. He recruited me back. My grandfather actually picked me up one night and he just was like, hey, get in the truck. I was like, I'm not gonna be Mormon, Gramps. And he's like, I don't care, just get in the truck. And so he took me home to his place and I lived there for a little bit. Um, he was, he's no longer with us. He died in 2020 to cancer. I was real close to my gramps. My gramps uh, has a similar story. His dad abandoned him. He took care of him, him and his, his sister and his mom. Um, so we were just really close and we were able to talk about real things. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much just what happened after that. Started running, met my wife, and uh, we went to state together, running cross country, and then she started introducing me to Christianity. And uh, we started attending a church uh, out there in uh, California. You can name the church, people know oh, it. Oh, uh, uh, High Desert Church, if you guys know it. All right, cool, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot cool. of people from Victorville have escaped over here. Hey, so, all right, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but, it's a good uh, thing we left. And, uh, and you got, how long have you guys been married? Uh, so we've been married 11 years together, 16 years, and, 15 years. And yeah. now you're serving in ministry, I now said, at Cross Church. That's, that, is, that is a really amazing story of life change. Yeah. And we love to celebrate that with you. Nice. But Kyle, you were raised in religion. It doesn't get much more religion than uh, Mormonism. What is, what is appealing about religion that draws people into it and keeps them there? 
And, and at the same time, what is so destructive about religion? I mean, you, you lived it, you got to see the best, the worst of it. So what's appealing about religion, but also what's terrible, what's destructive about it? Yeah, man, um, there's a lot of appealing things about religion. Um, to be honest, growing up in the Mormon faith um, structure, um, us Mormon boys, we are very structured, we're very disciplined, um, just from the time we are born till the time we go on our mission, and then even more so. Um, so structure and discipline is very important to us. Um, being hard workers, everywhere I go, um, I constantly get Christians that tell me this, like, man, Mormons are hard workers. I'm like, yes, we are. We were born and raised in that. We were trained how to be hard workers. And then the money's always there, man. Um, to be honest, like, that is something that um, I could see in that faith that we were always striving to make the best life we could, um, make the best and the most amount of money um, to provide for our families. So the money was always there. There's some good things to it. But the most destructive thing, um, one I will say like, yeah, you're never good enough. Um, constantly, I always felt that in the Mormon faith. I'm never good enough. I'm never going to make it to the top kingdom. Um, guilt. I always felt guilty about everything that I did, every step that I took. If I didn't say the right thing, do the right thing, I felt guilty of what I was doing. But probably the most destructive thing that I can say about religion is that it keeps you worshiping created things instead of the creator, right? When we go through um, religion, whether it be organized religion or things that we surrender to that are not created by our creator, Jesus Christ, then it, our, our just lives just come apart. You know, our lives just get in these boxes and we just start living out what man's word says as opposed to what our creator's words say. And that is probably the biggest destructive thing that I've seen just coming out of religion and now knowing who Jesus is, that's who I need to worship. Yeah, that's a great descriptor that we worship the created things rather than the creator, which is what idolatry is. And, uh, you know, when we... When we put our ideas above God's ideas, we put our understanding above God's understanding, then, then that's what takes us off Jesus. And as soon as we get fixated on Jesus and anything else, then we've crossed that line from, you know, faith-based, you know, relationship into a works-based religion. Mm -hmm. No matter what label is on it, yeah. uh, you know, whether it's Mormonism or uh, the church down the street that we grew up in, uh, and, and all of them can have that element of Jesus and, and we want just Jesus. Yep. Just Jesus. Absolutely. Oh. Hey, so uh, we love your story. So what's it like now, and you've been doing it for a while, so you should have a, a good long answer, but what's it like living in the freedom of grace? Oh, man. Uh, it's indescribable, man. Like, I'm always I loved. just ask you to describe it. All right, I know, but it, it's really hard, dude. <laughs> um, I'm always loved. Um, there's always peace in my life. I always have forgiveness no matter what. Um, I'm absolutely free no matter what that I do. Right now I'm in a series teaching my students um, called Rock Solid, and we're going through the book of Romans. And there's this verse that I'm just captivated by in Romans chapter two, four, and five, and it talks about even in the midst of our sin, God withholds his wrath and he gives us kindness. He gives us peace. Even in the midst of our sin, God is willing to say, Kyle, it's gonna be all right, dude. I still love you. I still choose you. I still choose that you have eternal rest in me, mm -hmm. even though how much you screw up, man. And I just love that. I just love the God of who we worship every single day, man. It's awesome. It's it, awesome. It is awesome. It, I, I absolutely agree with you. So um, you came out of religion, and, we, and again, you can be stuck in religion, whether it's Mormonism, Catholicism, Baptistism, uh, you know, uh, whatever church it is, ism. Uh, what would you, what, what do you want to share with people who are still, you know, not feeling good enough, who are feeling guilty, who are trying and trying and trying, uh, and they're stuck in, in religion? What, what words of encouragement would you share with them? <laughs> That's a hard question. Um, I, thought I, gave, a lot. I gave it to you in advance. I know, I know, but I thought a lot about it, but uh, it always changes every time you say it to me. Um, <laughs> I think there's this idea of fearful faith and fearless faith. Something that I live by in my life verses, if you guys want to flip there real quick, it's in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. These are the verses I live by. And it says, so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in him, 
being rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, overflowing with gratitude. Be, be, be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elements of this world rather than on Christ. Hmm. And when I first read that, man, like, man, that was my story. That is who I leaned on. I leaned on everything else other than Christ. Even when I was atheist, man, like I leaned on things of this world, temptations of this world. That's what I wanted just in my life because I was like, that's the security I need. But this scripture just speaks so true to me about like my faith is in Jesus. And so for you to get out of religion, like I would just do what I have always done. I've asked God questions. And so the questions I would ask is, go ahead, you just have something? No, right, no. okay. Does your religion teach you to be fearful or uh, fearful of the created instead of the created? Um, you ha are you fearless? Do you have a fearless faith to overcome human tradition, spiritual forces, or just straight up lies that you've been told your whole life? Those are the type of questions I would be asking. And then I would just say, Man, and then dive into scripture on that. Mm. Dive into scripture and really what it means because this is the word of God. Amen. This is it. Amen. The, uh, uh, look, uh, I mean, the reality is Jesus has set us free and we want you to choose to embrace freedom. Okay, you've heard that from Kyle. Uh, we've been t talking about this for weeks. Uh, and so we want you to just, you know, Embrace that freedom that Christ has for you. We're going to keep talking about it because Paul keeps talking about it. And he wants us to live free in all different kinds of ways. But, uh, but we have to let go of those man-made things that trap us, that we feel connected to or committed to or guilty about so that Christ can really uh, just let us live in freedom because freedom is the place we want to live. Now, Kyle, I got to ask you uh, uh, this follow-up question because there's some people wondering what happened. So 15 years ago, your, your dad threw you out of the house uh, because you uh, embraced Christianity and said no to Mormonism. Uh, where's that relationship now? Um, it's non-existent. Um, to be honest, guys, like my parents saw, my, 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 I have four kids, two girls, twin boys. My wife gave birth uh, to four kids in two and a half years, so pray for her. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, twins were born. Uh, my parents literally saw my kids for about 15 minutes and then left. And so my kids don't know anything about my side of the family. They constantly ask me questions. Um, they try to get to know my family. I try to be um, as, as much as I can receiving to their questions. I know sometimes it's hard uh, for me and my wife because so much damage has happened there. But to be honest, it's non-existent. And I would say that's probably the hardest thing about Christianity that I had to learn going through this process is Christianity is not easy. Christianity is not easy at all. When you read like what Jesus says to his disciples, he says, everyone will hate you because of my name. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to unite houses, I came to divide them. And, I, and that's like a, that's, that hit home to me when I read those verses from Jesus, because I was like, what are you talking about, man? You're supposed to unite my family together, right? But I believe he will one day. I believe through his word and his timing and the way, the way he even transformed my life, I can't dictate what he's got going on for the future, man. And that's, that's probably the biggest thing about Christianity that I always say, everybody's got their road to Damascus, just like me and Paul. Everybody's gotta come to, to Christ someday. And, and you know, one thing that, and I just wanna share this, one thing that tripped me out about, about uh, Paul is that he gets this blindness, he sees God, he gets this blindness, but the blindness is lifted. He had an opportunity to go back and persecute Christians but he didn't. He went and he actually preached the gospel. He said, this is the Lord that changed my life. And it's the same thing for us. We can either go back to our old ways and persecute Christ, or we can be persecuted for Christ. And that's what I'm doing by embracing my faith now and saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna go back to my old ways of Mormonism. I'm gonna go forward to my new life, and that's with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's worth, yeah, that's worth celebrating. Hey, um, you know, we celebrate life change here, and uh, we, uh, man, I, I love your story of life change, radical life change, uh, through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, and the way you're living that out. So uh, we, we, we praise God for that. 
Uh, but in a moment, when we, when we close out this part, I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be praying for your parents and for God just to open their eyes and, and redeem that relationship uh, in Christ in amazing ways. Because, uh, you know, he can do that. He changed your life. He can change your life. And, and we believe that. But uh, I'm also going to just ask this. How many of you have a loved one who is trapped in, uh, you know, religion and is far from faith in Christ? Because we want to pray for them too. How many, how many of you guys have something? Okay. And, and, and there's a lot of them. Okay, how many of you just have a loved one that doesn't know Jesus, okay? All right, just about everybody. See, that's why, that's why we're on mission, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And, and that's what we want to see happen. So we're going to pray specifically uh, for Kyle's family, but we're also going to pray for yours too in just a moment. And that, and that just brings me to this point. Uh, look, Jesus set us free, and we want you to choose to embrace freedom. But um, some of you haven't chosen yet to embrace Jesus. And, and we want to encourage you, invite you, plead with you uh, to make that decision to follow Jesus with your life today. And, and if you've been trapped in religion, if you've been ignoring God, if you've been atheistic and saying, hey, I just don't believe he's real, and something has connected with you today, we want to invite you just to surrender to Jesus. Scripture said, Jesus, you know, said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And we want to invite you to make that decision today. Now, if you don't know how to make that decision, you don't know what it looks like, then it's as simple as this. Uh, grab one of those connect cards in the seats around you, fill it out, drop it in the box. We'll contact you this week. Okay, or you can come up. Our prayer team is going to be here right at the front after the service at all of our campuses. They would love to pray with you, talk with you about your relationship with Jesus. And in fact, Kyle is going to be right here up at the front with the prayer team. And if you need to talk to him about your struggle with religion and you got questions for him, he's here. He'll be glad to pray with you and talk with you uh, as well. Sorry about that, Parker and North Campus. He's not there. Okay, he's at Sweetwater, so um, I apologize. But um, but here's the thing: if if you know, if, if you are at that place where you're trying to decide whether or not it's worth it to follow Jesus, believe Kyle, believe me, believe the people sitting around you. He will change your life forever. Will you guys pray with me? Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for changing our lives. And, and God, we want to see that continue. I do pray for Kyle's parents that you would uh, interrupt their life in the same way that you interrupted his. That through your truth and through your spirit, they would come to that place of faith and, and experience life change and there'd be reconciliation in a family. Lord, for uh, those in this room and joining us online and all our campuses that, that have loved ones who are far from you, who don't know your grace, your mercy, your peace, your power to change their lives, Father, we commit them to you, asking that you would work miracles in their lives to open their eyes, to bring them to a place of surrender so they can find the freedom that comes in Jesus through giving our lives to you. So Father, this is our prayer. We ask it for ourselves, for our friends, for our family, for our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. We will live as slaves to religion or live free in Jesus. The mission of Calvary is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. We want you to know Jesus' love and follow his guidance for your life. He has set us free. Embrace the freedom. If today's message left you with questions, I invite you to email us at questions at calvaryaz.com. One of our pastors will contact you to discuss your thoughts and pray with you. Well, that's all for now. Please join us again next week. Bye-bye.